Guna ho malu aila amena elele o kapoard of land and natural resources. Aloha nui kako. I apologize in advance. I'm probably gonna have to stick to the script because I tend to get really emotional when I talk about Ohana and Aina, as you can tell already. <laughs> My name is Pua Ala, and I strongly support this CBSFA rules package and designation. My kula yivi are heia koala poko o ahu and o koe konehama Hawaii Island. Currently a master's candidate at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, Nat Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Management. I study under Mehana. Um, I come to you today not only as someone who studies marine resources, but also as someone who's benefited tremendously from them. Generations upon generations of Maikupuna cared for and relied upon the natural resources of Heia and Okoe. And when I say my kupuna, I don't only mean my grandparents, but also their grandparents before them, and before them, and before them. <sighs> when it was their time to go, their bones were returned to the earth, and they became the nutrients that helped those very resources thrive. Thus, taking care of the places that we come from is taking care of our kupuna, <laughs> which is why this means so much to me, and I get on that's about it. Okay. The community of Haena and communities throughout the state, like Ka'upulehu, seek to do just that, to malama the places that they come from because their aina represents their kupuna, as well as all the practices that those kupuna utilize to care for those resources. Biological studies show us that the nearshore environment faced tremendous threats from increased land-based pressures, increased pressures on the resources themselves, and a variety of other causes. But social investigations into the ways that we manage these resources tell us that small-scale, community-led, and place-based approaches like the one you see here provide solutions to many of these problems. The rules package before you today is based upon kupuna knowledge and traditional fishing practices specific to haena. It was developed by the people who interact with haena's fishery every day. Customary resource management in Hawaii relied on these very individuals, the kiloi'a and po'olawai'a, if you will, to know their resource so well that their fishing practices would minimally impact the abundance and health of the resources that they interacted with. That's what it means to live by Opono. And that's exactly what Haena seeks to achieve through these rules and this designation. I urge you to adopt the rule package in its entirety and to support this community-based effort and similar efforts throughout the state. May you olelo, mahalo ko alohe anumai. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Diz and I'm from the island of Oahu. Um, I am currently also a UH Manoa master's student working under Mihana. Have the privilege of working under her. Um, I first and foremost want to thank you guys for the public hearing in Hanalei. That was actually my first public hearing ever, and um, that was a real beautiful opening for my my introduction into public hearings and how they hopefully will run in the future and the importance of having public hearings in the place of the communities. Um, I also just want to tell you guys about, I know that we're always looking for things like this, but how they impact globally and the movements that they create. And um, I just really want to talk about the profoundness of this community and how they have affected me personally and what I've seen around me. Um, I was first introduced to this community only a few a few months ago, actually, in March. I went there for spring break with my UH Chilo class before graduating in May, and we spent a whole week over there with Uncle Press, Uncle Kaylee, Uncle Tommy, where they taught us about their place and taught me about the taught our class about the community-based subsistence fishing effort, and um, it was it was then that this community has impacted me and. Within two months later, I was living in Haena, living with the community and living there all summer, learning from the kupuna over there. And now I am form, forming my master's and creating my master's work around the needs and answering the questions that the community has. And so that's how they've profoundly impacted me. But I also think that this two years ago, when I was still in my undergrad, I was in an internship program 
where my teacher drew a four square and she said there was your policy makers, your managers, your researchers, your community education, and they were all separated. And she told, she talked about the lack of crossover. And something that I have seen from that two, from two years ago when she said that, I have seen all take place through this movement. I have seen collaboration between researchers, between community. I have finally seen that crossover, which I hadn't seen through my undergrad career and from being talked about that it didn't even really exist. I have seen communities join hands, Moloka'i, Lana'i, Maui, Big Island, all these communities joining hands, which is another thing that I haven't seen in a really long time of everybody under the same goals and moving together and standing together today. And I just think that that's something that has been a profound impact in all of this and this movement is besides these amazing rules, place-based management and enforcing these, but also just the connection and the relationships it has made. And to me, this is what Hawaii is. This is what it's supposed to look like. And I think that this model can really demonstrate that for the future. So I mahalo you guys for listening and mahalo you for being here today and allowing me to testify. Mahalo. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gabe Johnson. Uh, I came over from Lanai. Uh, I'm uh, representing a small group. We are trying to start up the same thing over on Lanai. So I uh, made a little letter for you. I'll be real short. Uh, the name of our group is the Lanai Heritage Subsistence Program. We're seeking to create a CBSFA here on Lanai. And at the present time, the group is small and in its infancy. However, as residents of the state of Hawaii and as uh, I, uh, on the island of Lanai, we feel compelled to let the board know that we're in full s support of the Hyena movement. In particular, the proposals uh, of the Hui Maka Aina O Makana and uh, the E Alu Pu'u before the BLNR 188-22.9 and its subsequent approval will secure the fishing resources for the hyena community for generations to come. Further, that this will lead to and pave the way for other communities to champion through the obstacles in their journey to create their own CBSF areas on their own islands. It's really important that uh, you know these guys are the the leaders and going ahead and. I, I really appreciate all their efforts, and I, w I want to um, support them as much as we can. So uh, I came all over Lanai to let you know that. So that's it. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Kevin Chang. I just want to let you know that Bravian Kobegon has left the room. However, uh, he has wanted me to just express his support. Mahalo. Followed by David Hello, Chair. Maui Nui Representative Jimmy Gomes and uh, board members. My name is Kelsey Mac Poipoi. I come from the island of Mokai, Palaau Moku, Aupara of Hawaii Hua. And my wife made sure that I better say that. <laughs> I am the resource manager of our community conservation organization. We are also in the process of seeking CBSFA for our area. I testify in support of the proposed CBSFA for Hyena. And um, whereby the community can be part of the solution to Malama de Aina through best practices and adaptive management. This initiative will hopefully bring awareness to the people of these islands that if we take care of our place, manage them properly, then we will continue to have enough. We won't have the need to go to somebody else's place and gather. So much conversation has been going on for a long time about declining resources but not much action had been taken. So designation for Hyena will help to bring pride back to the community and the people and a positive approach to Malama de Aina. I think the, 
<coughs> that statement that um, take care of your place, so you don't need anybody else's place to harvest. It's um, it's a traditional practice that a lot of us forgot about. We don't even practice that anymore because the state allow everybody and anybody to go wherever they want and gather anything they want. And for a lot of the resources, no more regulations. And I, I live with that myself. And I'm going to bring this stuff up again before the board that at Moomomi, we've been dealing with the decline lobster population for a long time. And I hope maybe one day the board, DR, or somebody can address that problem and work with me on that. I know this is about Hyena, but um, I think Hyena will be facing problems like that in the future. So just to make you guys aware that there's ongoing stuff that we all need to look at and not let that thing go because we can stop the problem before it becomes the problem. So that's, thank you very much. Before you leave, I just want to um, acknowledge that even though Haena has gotten to this point, uh, the, the genesis for community based management actually started many, many years ago in Mobile. Mm -hmm. So I recognize you for that. Thank you. And I would just offer that if you're interested in a lobster mm -hmm. rule at Mobile, I've said all of the community based management, we certainly would encourage you to come through DAR. And Okay. Thank you very much. Try not to take you guys' time. I'm going to turn in a letter with a list of things. Hello, my name is Kevin Chang. I'm the executive director of an organization called Kua Aina Ulu Awamo which means grassroots growing together through shared responsibility because we're talking about issues in which we have to share responsibility together to address. Um, I just wanted to say that Haena is not in the room alone, as you can see today. Uh, you see Mo'omomi, you see folks from Ho'okena, and I just wanted to list out a group of folks who have signed on to a resolution I'm going to turn in today of 28 community organizations from across the state called Ealopu. Those organizations include Hanalei Watershed Hui, Limuhuli Garden Preserve, Malama Koloa, Waipa Foundation, Eva Limu Project, Hoala Aina Kupono, Kaala Farm, Kahana Fishermen's Hui, Kako Oivi, Malama Maunalua, Malama Pupukea Paumalu, Pai Pai Oheia, Papahana Kuaola, Kahonua Momona, Hui Malama Omomomi, Lanai Limu Restoration Project, Kupa'ano Lanai, Save Honolua Coalition, Kipahulu Ohana, Polanui Hiu, Waihe Elimu Restoration, Hui Aloha Kiholo, Kaohana Ohonao Nao, Kama'aina United to Protect the Island, Friends of Ho'okena Beach Park, and Pa'apono Miloli'i. Um, and I know we've made, there's a, there's a strong emphasis on what uh, we refer to as Western science. And I, I appreciate that we think about that, but I also think that science is a way of thinking and gathering information. And part of this process for Haena has been a loss of the baseline information of kupunas who have documented the loss of practices and the loss of resources, and they have been lost. We have a few still here today. They're the baseline. Mac Poi Poi just spoke, and Uncle Tommy earlier. So, mahalo nui. I'm handing in this letter with that resolution, as well as a DVD of the Hanalei hearings for you guys. Mahalo. Followed by William Okay. Aloha, Chairman, Aila, and Board. My name is Aurora Kagawa Viviani. Um, I'm a PhD student at UH Manoa, um, and I also grew up on Oyelimu, just up the road, so this is kind of my backyard. I'm not from Haena, and I want to, but I am here in support of the adoption of the Haena CBSFA rules package. Um, so why would an urbanite, overeducated, uh, you know, I, I like hanging out up Malka, but I do eat fish. I mean, why would I be here? And, and, and I have two reasons, and I just want to share that. I support my ohana in the area. Um, who do, who live, fish, and raise families there. Um, growing up, 
in town, I would hear my mom talking about Uncle Jack, Hashimoto, and Hukilao, and though I never grew up with it, I value it. And I don't need to benefit directly, um, but I value that there are communities there um, with these resources, and I value the possibility that they can, they can malama their own places. Um, I also support because um, these communities and their commitment to managing it are a model, not just for fisheries, not just for ha'ena, but for stewardship and science everywhere. And the things I think about tend to be water. Um, it's a positive model, as Emily pointed out, and um, and I just appeal to you to uh, to support it. Thank you. Aloha Chair Ayla, members of the board, uh, Sterling Wong, uh, Public Policy Manager for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I'm testifying today on behalf of uh, Dr. Kamala Opono Crab, our <coughs> CEO, our uh, Kopohana. Uh, we submitted testimony written. Uh, I'm just going to briefly uh, summarize some of it. Um, OHA supports these rules because they represent the return of the management of this resource to the community that has traditionally cared for them and whose practices, lifestyle, Practices and lifestyle still depend on it. Uh, in February 2014, our Board of Trustees uh, adopted a reso um, supporting CBSFA designations and rules and um, urging policymakers uh, to support these communities seeking CBFSAs. Um, in closing, OHA supports these rules and we urge the Board to adopt them. Mahalo. Any questions for <laughs> Aloha board members, my name is Jack Kittinger, I'm the director of Conservation International's Hawaii program and I'm here to stro show uh, strong support on behalf of our organization for HAENA and their rules package here for consideration. I've asked my staff just to send me uh, a list of major things that have happened in their lives over the last seven years because that's how long this has taken to get to this point, it's a long time. Um, so, to summarize, uh, there have been seven degrees awarded to his staff. One person trekked the Annapurna circuit in Nepal. That sounded pretty cool. There have been ten babies born in our families. And I have to revise that this morning because Kay House Springer had her baby last night. <laughs> That's a level. Four of our staff have gotten married. Four family matriarchs have passed on. Um, there have been six moves back and forth to the mainland in service of family, school, and other commitments. One of our staff members who's a huge fan of uh, Premier League football, that's soccer, said his team has won 135 times, lost 233 times, and drawed 66 times, but who's counting? So a lot has happened in the last seven years is the point. The community has invested tirelessly in this process. I think that much is very clear from the testimony that you folks have received here today. More than a dozen revisions to the package, as people describe, lots of compromise has been part of this process. It has not been perfect, but as someone said in the public testimony in Hanalei, it has been good enough, and this package is good enough. Um, most importantly, the process has been legitimate uh, in the eyes of the community, and dissenting voices have been heard as part of that, and that's an important part of it. Um, the other thing I want to make clear is that uh, I know it may be shocking, but sometimes the uh, nonprofit community does not speak with a single voice on issues. Um, in this case, at least from my perspective, we are. There's complete alignment um, among many of the nonprofit organizations, and I think it's important to point out. Um, it's been clear there's been a lot of investment of people's time um, outside uh, from the community members, from the nonprofits, and so on. But I want to also point out that there's been tremendous investment on behalf of BLNR and DLNR. Um, many of you are new in the, on the board, though you're not new to this challenge and to these issues and to this place. Uh, you are just invested in this process as a community is. And um, you have a, a difficult task of trying to determine what is the best for the, the public good and the citizens of the state. Uh, it's our position that the majority of the interests have been brought to the table and that this is the right way forward. I think you've heard that from a variety of perspectives. So a multitude of communities, organizations, and leaders across the state support this. If you vote in the affirmative here today, you will validate a seven-year multi-stakeholder effort um, 
and you have the opportunity to make a lot of hopes and dreams come true. So we urge you to support this. Thank you. Aloha. Uh, Kako. The uh, Chair Isla and board members, my name is Bob Lainau. I'm here representing uh, the hat I'm wearing today is Malamo Pupukea Waimea. Uh, we provide stewardship for the Pupukea Marine Life Conservation District. And I'm happy to report that when you set uh, some land aside or some ocean aside to take care of, it gets better. And uh, what I'm unhappy to report is for the last 50 years I've been diving from Kuhuku Point to Haleiwa and the rest of the ocean uh, is really a, it, it's tragic. The near shore waters, all the places you used to be able to go, you know where the Kumu were, you know where the Veo Veo were, you know where everything was, is gone, it's pow. It's, uh, you're, you're, everything is, is really in a sad, sad state. Uh, I don't want to make the deal on our board. Uh, feel bad, but the Department of Land and Natural Resources includes the natural resources in the ocean has gone to hell in the last 50 years, and I hope you guys can seize this huge opportunity in front of you right now to grab a hold of another experiment. There's a, a Fuonua concept for fish. is a fabulous idea, and we need more ideas, and we need more areas set aside. I hope you guys uh, can see your way clear to do the right thing. Mahalo. I'm in favor of the fisheries management plan for Haena. However, I think it's missing uh, two big dogs. One of it um, goes back to the Kumulipo. Kumulipo says that chant one, uh, what is in the mountain protects what's in the sea. Talks about 13 limus in the ocean. The limu, which is the algae, is the food basis for the fish in the fishery. Um, Makena, um, known as Makua in the area, is the parent or the womb of the fishery. In the Kumulipo, it talks about the woman, which is the surface river, it's the woman, bringing that fresh water to the ocean. The nutrients of the fresh water make algae grow. More algae, more fish, increase the opportunity of abundance. The male stream in the Kumulipo is the underground Pohoihoi water channel that goes down to the sea, and that feeds the fishery. As we know, on all of our islands, all the rivers have been diverted for ag as well as for development. And in the last 50 years, we've seen the decline of limo because of that. Now, <clears throat> this, the reason why the fishery hasn't collapsed is the pohoihoi lava tubes. Most people do not know that moi, aveo veo, ava, mullet, oopus, some specific species of opai and eel need, like salmon, to spawn in the freshwater estuary streams. A lot of these opportunities have been cut off. So you have two things, stream estuary uh, breeding, and then through the fresh water like salmon. Those have been, perennial streams have been cut off. So the underground pohoihoi lava tubes have been the only avenue for the fisheries to continue. The total collapse of the limu will continue if management policies on the land to the ocean are not a bridge. Their ancient prehistoric water, 8,000 feet below the surface of the water. Okay. I wouldn't point those out. I was taught by the water konohikis where they are on all islands. I wouldn't point it out to you because the management of fresh water as it stands is very poor. And I don't want Fiji water turning into ancient Hawaiian water being sold worldwide and not taking care of the management. One golf course takes one million gallons a day. Ten years of one golf course, 350 million gallons. I worked at Kaupulehu. I worked at Manalani Bay in 1989 when I used to walk across property before they built the Ritz-Carlton. There was a big cave with white mullet, tons of water coming out. Once you start tapping it for all of these big uh, uh, golf courses, you take that by 20 or 25, you're talking about billions of gallons of fresh water. The specialists then go against the Hawaiian fishermen and say, you're the one causing stress. Now, there is a management basis plan, which is absolutely correct what you're doing. But when you take away the food source for the fishery, I don't care what you try to do and how many fences you try to build and what your laws are, there won't be any more fishes. 
So pinpointing the real, real source is very, very important. And the second part is in our generational practices dealing with Opelo and the Opelo nets on the koa, we basically train them to stay in the net and be fed. And we keep the big breeders, the grandmothers that produce hundreds of thousands of eggs. The Western model of the big prize is take the biggest fish out of the sea, which is the biggest breeder. Instead of tens of thousands of eggs, hundreds of thousands of eggs are removed from the environment. Those two points need to be looked at. And I don't come here, I, I come from Evamoku on Oahu. I'm a cultural practitioner of limu medicine and coral medicine, taught to be by my grandfather. But I also am here from Peki Meek, my third great-grandmother, whose mother was Princess Harriet Kavahine Kipe, the granddaughter of George Humehume, the son of George Kaumoli'i Mo'i of Kauai. So this is not uh, niale, as Hawaiians always say, you're putting your nose where you don't belong. My family's interest is with all islands, but especially with Kauai. I thank you. I support this measure. Mahalo. Oh, my name is Michael Kumu Kauoha Li. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Brenda Ascension. Uh, I was raised in Waipio here on Oahu. And in my family history, there are a lot of instances of my kupuna being separated from their communities and their places. Um, my great-grandmother came from Okinawa through an arranged marriage. Uh, my grandfather came from the Philippines. He was the only one in his family to come um, to start working on the na'i before he came to Oahu. Um, and I think that's a common thread in a lot of our stories here in this room and our broader community. Um, whether, whether we ended up where we are through our kupuna coming through the continent or from across the ocean um, the other way. And um, it's kind of unique and amazing to think that these kupuna from Haena that I've been talking today, they have that many generational tie to their place and they have that opportunity to continue caring for their place and they are still very much a part of their community there. Um, so I think I'm in support of the Haena CBSFA community rules package as they stand. And I think this is really just an opportunity for us to stop the pattern of severance from people and their places and their communities. So I hope you approve the rules package as they are. Thank you.